I bought this DSLR in 2016. I loved how I could take thousands of photos and instantly see the results. I could even edit the files on the computer and share it on the internet if I wanted to. It was fast, simple, and very practical. But a few weeks ago in March, a good friend posted a photo for a film camera for sale. And even though I had no intentions of owning one, I thought it looked really cool. I ended up getting the camera from her, but there was something wrong. This is a story of 5 things I wish I knew before buying a film camera. Hi, my name is Justin and today's video is going to be all about film cameras. Buying your first film camera can be equally exciting and daunting all at the same time, especially since most of these cameras today are most likely going to be second hand, which means you run the risk of getting one that comes with problems with it or worse, one that doesn't work altogether, in which case repairing them might even cost you more than the camera itself. And that's exactly what happened when I got this camera, the Canon A1. A, this is a 35 millimeter SLR camera from Canon and it came with this 50 millimeter f1.4 fd lens now this camera is in great working condition right now i even got it this custom red shutter release button to make it look even better but it wasn't exactly that way when i got it now it, that wasn't the fault of the person whom i purchased this camera from it was totally mine because honestly i was just really excited to own a full frame 50 millimeter f1.4 lens that even though i didn't really have any idea about owning fil a film camera, I ended up getting it anyway. And so if you're someone who's looking to buy your first film camera and you're looking for some basic information about them, then this video is going to be for you. I'm going to be sharing with you five things I wish I knew before I bought my first film camera. Tip number one, ask about haze, fungus, and scratches. Because these cameras are very old, you're never sure of how well they've been stored throughout the years. This one came with a 50mm f1.4 lens, and that was actually the biggest reason why I wanted to get this camera. However, with it came were spots of fungus not only on the lens, but on the viewfinder too. Even though this was my first time to own a film camera, I'm pretty familiar with how important it is to keep your camera gear free from fungus. I've never had to deal with them in the past and so I was a little bit stressed out about the situation. Lens fungus is a combination of dust and moisture that finds its way into the interior elements of a camera lens. Dust by itself does not typically cause a problem, but if that dust contains fungus spores and is combined with moisture, fungus can grow. Left untreated, lens fungus can permanently decrease the performance of the lens and can cause your images to look fuzzy or hazy. And the worst part is, it can actually infect your other gear too. To check the lens, it's best to shine a light through them. A clear lens will be free from anything except maybe a few specks of dust here and there depending on the situation. Otherwise, you'll be quite sure to know if there's fungus as they will look like branches or webbing that seems to be stuck on the lens or viewfinder. Don't worry if your camera does have them because most of the time it can be cleaned easily. And since this camera had it, I just sent it to a specialist to get it cleaned. And like I said, now it's, in, it's really in perfect working condition. Tip number two, check the lens's aperture blades. Aside from haze, fungus, or scratches, there are a few other things you'll want to check out with the lens. A common issue that these lenses have are oil creeping onto the aperture blades due to a number of reasons. But in general, you'll want to make sure that the blades are clean and dry to make sure they'll work properly. One cool thing I really like about vintage lenses is the fact that I can open and close the aperture blades manually. So you'll want to see if they open and close fully. It's pretty easy to check in that regard since all you really need to do is to turn the aperture dial or simply fire a few shots with the different aperture settings to see if it's corresponding correctly. Because after all, what's the sense of getting an f1.4 lens if it's just going to be stuck at f3.5 or even narrower, right? Tip number three, check shutter speeds. 
Film cameras like this are hugely dependent on how well the gears inside them work, which means they can fail or be inaccurate after a while. I didn't know it then, but it's important to check that the camera works with all shutter speeds. It's apparently pretty common for film cameras to stop working, especially on the slower speeds, so be sure to check on those too. It was a good thing that this particular one didn't have any problems with the shutter speed. Tip number four, check the film advance lever. Unlike digital cameras that allow you to take photos one after another, most film cameras will have a film advance lever. And its main purpose is to advance the film inside the camera so that you can take the next shot. Sometimes these can get stuck, so be sure to try and fire a few shots with the camera while you're at it. This should be a pretty smooth operation. Another way you can check this out is by opening the camera and watching the spool turn as you try and advance the film. Tip number five. Shoot a roll of film to see if there are light lines. Needless to say, a film camera doesn't have an LCD display at the back, which means not only will you not know if you took a good photo, you also won't be able to tell if there are light leaks. 35mm film is extremely sensitive to light. That's why a film camera's back will usually have a strip of light seal around it to make sure no amount of light will enter it once you close it up with film inside. Unfortunately, since you really won't know if there are any light leaks, the best advice I can give you is to get yourself a roll of cheap film and load it up with your camera, shoot it, and have the film develop immediately. In my case, I used a roll of Kentmere Pan 400, a black and white 35mm film, and had it develop. When it came back, I immediately saw that there was in fact light leaks on the shots, which meant I had to resend it to the specialist once again. So to avoid this issue, you could also try to ask the seller if they have some recent photos that they took with the camera and hopefully they'll have some on hand. Otherwise, you'll really just have to try it out for yourself. Bonus tip, have proper storage. Like it or not, these cameras are going to need a bit more care than your modern digital ones. So you'll need to be able to store it in some sort of dry box. There are different options in the market from the expensive electric ones to DIY things like the one I have that you can try. These things, in my opinion, are very, very important, not just for your film camera, but all your gear in general to help you avoid any buildup of dust, moisture, and fungus. So you can always expect your gear to work like a well-oiled machine. So there you have it. Those are the five things I wish I knew before buying my first film camera. Hopefully with the tips that we've shared here, you'll have gained the confidence and some basic knowledge on what to look out for. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you liked this video. And if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is simply by subscribing. My name is Justin and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Happy hunting!